Hi, I'm Jonathan. I'm the Director of Academics for Manhattan Prep. We teach test prep classes. We've been doing this online for over 10 years and in Zoom for the past two years. We made this video series to share with you some of our favorite tips from teaching online. Hope you enjoy. Hi there. I'm Joe Martin. I'm a teacher with Manhattan Prep. I teach the GRE, GMAT, and LSAT. I want to give you a few tips, mainly tech-oriented tips. Let's start with hardware, getting yourself set up. First thing is you don't need a high-powered machine for most online platforms. Uh, if you have a new-ish computer, even if it's just a run-of-the-mill base model, it's probably going to get the job done. Just need a basic processor speed and uh, internet connection and you're good to go with most of these programs. Uh, I will warn you about using a tablet. A lot of these programs are just not as streamlined with tablets and it tends to be a bit of a trickier task. So ideally you can get some sort of laptop desktop to do this. Uh, another piece of hardware thing to be aware of, a lot of people like to use second monitors. Uh, a second monitor can be really useful. If you've done this before, you know that there's just very big space limitations. You got a place for people's videos, you've got the slides you're sharing maybe, a place for notes, people are chatting things in. You can end up with a pretty crowded screen. Um, I'm gonna give you some tips how to use one monitor. I use one monitor, but if you've got one or can afford one, a second monitor can definitely loosen up the, uh, the space restrictions. A couple other hardware pieces I think are pretty critical. One is headphones. I use just a basic set of headphones, just earbuds, honestly. They've got a mic attached. Uh, it's going to cut down an echo, uh, give a nice clear quality to when you're talking. Um, I'd recommend uh, you ask your students if they can to get their own headphones as well for the same reasons. Maybe the most critical piece of hardware after the computer, though, is a tablet. I'm not talking like an iPad tablet, but just a writing tablet, a basic pen tablet. I, mine's a Wacom. Um, uh, the basic models are, are relatively inexpensive and they can make really anytime you'd be doing something on a board in class, it makes it so you can naturally extend that to online teaching. You can just write on your tablet and write on the screen using that rather than having to use a text tool, which can feel clunky. Um, if you do use it though, most of these are going to come with some sort of screen mapping. The default is your tablet maps to the, your entire computer screen. Um, that can actually make it so the tablet's so small that it, the writing is just overly sensitive. So I recommend you use whatever mapping tool they have to map it to a portion of your screen where you think you'll be doing most of your writing. All right, I've got the conferencing software loaded up now using Zoom here. I wanna give you a couple of tips about the, the physical setup for your teaching space. One, background. Generally keep it simple. I think that's fairly obvious. Maybe less obvious though, make sure it's not lit. Generally having like a window behind you or definitely a light behind you could be a big problem. Makes you end up looking like a silhouette um, where you're just kind of a shadow, like you're in the eyewitness protection program or something like that. Um, one other tip, this is mainly for, I, I see it happen with people who use two monitors, is they end up with a camera on a different screen than the one that they're looking at. So they end up teaching like this. Uh, which is not very engaging for the student if you're never looking at them. So whatever your setup is, try to have the camera in, in front of wherever it is that you're looking at. All right, I've got Zoom loaded up right now. What I want to talk about is how to actually set up the screen. It can be kind of crowded, honestly, um, for the one monitor types like myself. Uh, how can we do this in a way that's not chaotic? Uh, I would often like to share my whole screen. Um, and what I'll do is a couple of things I've already done. The background screen, notice it's just solid blue. You can do that by just changing your desktop background and picking a solid color. I've also just hit everything and made everything else was everything else is closed. This uh, menu bar here, I've, I've hit it as well. As far as this other stuff, I've got a Google Doc here. I think really great for working on group work together, anything where you want every, all of the class to see what everyone's doing. You can have students pick their own color or, or initial what they're writing so we can see who's doing what. Um, 
I'll just throw it out there. Google Classroom is a great way to organize these Google Docs and share links to the Google Docs. So um, I'm not given a tutorial on that at the moment. I encourage you to explore Google Classroom as well if you're, if you're into the Google Docs stuff. So I usually put this over here on the right. Um, for the main video area, I'll put this here. Another important thing that we're often going to be using is the chat. I think by default, it attaches it, which isn't ideal. Now I'm having to click back and forth between the two. Um, however, there's a little button here to pop it out. And this is where I like to hide it down, um, typically down here. And you can just put it wherever you think is most convenient for you um, and size it uh, to an appropriate size. All right, so here we are in a classroom setting. A couple things I want to show you. One thing, good to get your students to do it, and I find it better for me as well, is to go Brady Bunch style. If you click this gallery view here, um, right now it's just one giant face. It's mine. Um, if you hit gallery view, you can see your classroom, I think, in a just more appealing way. Um, also, for the narcissists out there, if you click on your own image, you can hide yourself view, and then you don't have to stare at yourself. A couple other things I want to show you, especially with internet. If your internet's a little sketchy, honestly, the easiest way to try to fix it is to turn off video. Not ideal. We want the video on if we can. Um, I'll just show you a couple other tricks, though, to help save that uh, yourself from having to do that. One is the Enable HD. If you turn off Enable HD, that, that uses some extra bandwidth, so um, you can click that off. Um, well, we're in here, you can see touch up my appearance. I think the most critical thing when you're teaching is to look good. So I'm going to turn that on. Uh, but do know that actually can use a little more computer processing power as well. So be aware of that. So when you're teaching online, there's actually some other software that works really nicely with a lot of the online conferencing. Um, generally, it's the Google Suite, um, Google Calendar, Google Docs, Google Slides, um, Google Classroom. I'll talk about all of this. Right now, I want to talk about Google Calendar, specifically with Zoom. Uh, I've logged into my Zoom account right here, and you can see there's this Chrome extension. You can download that. It'll add it to Chrome if you're using Chrome. Once you've done that, if you go into your calendar, you probably need to restart. Um, if you want to start any meeting, you can see we have this option to just make it a Zoom meeting. So much easier to invite people to your Zoom room, I think, than always having to copy the link. All right, here we are in the classroom setting. I've got everything set where I want. I've got the chat window down there. I've got Google Docs shared with my students for some shared notes. Um, and here I've got the Google Slides that I'm going to use to share whatever other information I'm sharing with my students. Really great tool. Um, when I'm getting ready to share it, you want to hit present and you want to exit full screen. So you still have access to everything else. Uh, once you've done that, watch what happens here. I'm going to share the screen. I'm only going to share the Google Chrome here, the, the Google Docs we've got. And notice the videos jump off to their own place. Find a, as convenient to the spot as you can for them. Uh, and let's focus on this. Couple things, you can annotate, you can draw whatever you want on it. You can use the text tool. Um, you can move that around. Generally, you want the mouse if you're gonna advance with that. Once you've got this shared, couple things to be aware of. One, I see a lot of teachers who, as they're talking, they're, they're kind of pointing at whatever they're looking at. Students can see where that pointer is, and, and honestly, it's kind of distracting. Um, same thing when you're teaching, you're not constantly pointing at everything with your finger. Don't do it in the online classroom uh, either. Uh, if you want to draw attention to something quickly, you can go to this spotlight tool, uh, point at what you want, click it, and everyone can see that. Now, when it comes to navigating within Google Slides, uh, if we just go to our slides here, you can uh, get this tool and pick wherever it is you want to go uh, in, your, in your slide deck, easy way to navigate around. Um, if, however, let's say I don't want students to see something for a second, I can pause it. Anything I do, any navigation I do, any writing I do, um, if I write on the screen here, no one is seeing that. If I resume share, if I've gone to another slide, whatever it might be, I've written something, they all immediately see it once I resume the share. 
So I know I've been talking a lot about all the Google Suite products. I do want to point out PowerPoint. I know a lot of people use that, and it actually has a couple advantages. If you are using it, just like Google Slides, um, you don't want to be in full screen mode. So go to set up slideshow and click browsed by an individual before you start your show. Once you're in there, uh, same thing if I'm sharing that screen. Here's the cool thing about it. Typically Google Slides, if you stop the share, anything you've written just disappears from the screen. As you advance slides, your writing all just stays there. You have to clear the screen always. With PowerPoint, if you right click on it, Get your mouse and right click on PowerPoint. You can go to pointer options and click pen. Anything you write on that now is now saved to the slide. So if I go back, there it is. What I've written remains on the slide. So if you prefer that, um, PowerPoint ha does have some advantages. For hardware, I think writing tablets the most important thing to have. Uh, familiarize yourself with the Google suite of products um, and make a pick between Google Slides and PowerPoint and just hone your skills on whichever one you choose. Aside from that, maybe the most important thing is to, to take some time figuring out how to organize your screen precisely. Oh, and don't forget, screen touch up. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out our other videos, you'll see them in the list below. Feel free to also reach out to us at the email address in the description to this video if you are interested in more direct guidance about how to teach online.